Hello, welcome back to Hi Fi Tech and Entertainment. As a Fury developer, we have to know the basic step of creating a Fury element from the scratch. So, in this video, I will take you through the process of creating a Fury elements. For creating a Fury elements, we need some service. So, we will develop some sample service and we'll configure that to the Fury element. And also, in the list report page, how to add additional UI elements and some more functionalities to the object base. These all things you will learn in this video. So finally, by the end of the video, you will have a fully functional SAP Fury element application with a refined list report and extended object base will be there ready. So let's get started. So what I will do is, I will create a dev space. First, here, Instead of Fury, I'm choosing the full stack cloud application. Why? Because I'm using some demo service for that. Once you create a service, initially the state will be in starting stage. You have to wait to change this to as till running stage. Then only your dev space will be created. Within the dev space, you can work. So this way, based on your requirement, you have to choose the dev space. In the trailer account, we have only, it will allow only two dev spaces. You can see that thing here. Only one will be the running stage. Another one, it will be on stop shade. Once you run the other one. So within the dev space, you can create a multiple applications. So after the initial creation of this dev space, what you have to do is, I will provide you the some demo service URL. First, you have to clone it. Then you can start our Fury development. Let's be wait. Yeah, now it's in running stage. So you can see the welcome page, which you can create the application project. Yes, now here we have an option called clone from the git. Here I will provide you this service for you for practice. Yeah. Wait until the clone has to finish, then it will ask you to open a, this project in new page. Yeah. Now, to complete the service, what you have to do is, we have to run a command. For that, menu, terminal, new terminal. Here, make sure it will be on this Fury element incident management user or not. If it's not there, CDS space, CD space, that name. Then it will jump to the, this place. NPM install. Yeah. Now, the service will be installed. Next, what we have to do is create a Fury element application. Two ways we can create. One is new project from the template. And the other way is view command palette. Here we have to enter application generation. Yeah. So here you have to choose the template. Now I'm choosing the list report page. Click on next. Now we will connect the application with the O data service. This O data service, you will use it for an example already. We did add it. So for that, select it and select the use a local cap project. So with this project, we are going to see. If you see here within the app, nothing is there. Now, once I configure, you can see the Fury element details. Next. Here you have to give 
choose the entity name all that things if you want to choose different you can now i'm choosing only incidents table type is responsive next here we have to give the module name next application title and also the component name so please make sure this one should be on some naming proper naming conventions so instead of com this is demo right i will give as a demo yeah now i'm not going to deploy this project in any way that's why i clicked on finish so after click on finish the new fury element application is now created from the template using the service and configured provided in this step so after the project is generated in the application information page it will show you the complete overview of the project details and the tasks that you have performed on this project so in case if this data is not visible for you what you have to do is go to the view command palette within that open application information then it will takes you here so if you see here within the app you can see now the incidents application within that all pages now here this within this two views will be there list report page and object page to run the application click on preview application choose this yeah, your application will open in the new tab. So initially the application starts with an empty list. Press the go. The list report table will show the data from the sample service. And the filter fields, actions and table columns, everything is defined by the annotations in the code data cds files so this files is a part of the code data service now here you can see only within the filter bar we have four columns if you want to add new columns the next step what we are going to learn is adding ui elements to your list report for that go back to your application here within the application information select list report once you click on that in the right side you can see the page editor mode here now i'm going to add the filter field yeah here we have two options if you want to custom filter we can do it now instead of custom i'm choosing some standard one here we have drop down options if you click on category code this filter field will be added to your application click on add yes you can see that here and also go to the application and you can see the category like this way you can add your elements so if you want to change your source code here we have an option you can see it's there if you want to add some more filter if you see here now only status code priority code category code now if you want to add some more for example category name yeah see automatically the code will be generated and if you go to your application you can see that you click now if you see here we have an f4 functionality now what i will do is instead of this f4 i will change it to as a drop down for that what you have to choose select your property what where you want to change it within the category we can see all the properties here we have an display type here you have to add the result list if you choose as an descending apply then 
you can see the format is in drop down format yeah so so it will application will brings you the complete details and description everything you can see here so this way we can change the effort to as a drop down format and if you observe here application when i run initially the data is not loading so now what i will do is i will configure the application to load the data initially itself for that what you have to choose is this choose as a table here you can see the all properties yeah here i can see the initial load click on enable once you select this property it will run the data automatically and load the back end service yeah yes you can see now same way if you want to add a columns we can add it here add a basic column we have to choose the column what you want to add now i'll choose title add yeah see automatically within the source code the code is generating and if i run the application the columns i can see here so this way you can add your columns properties everything if you want to customize it you can choose as a custom option now i will navigate to an object list page to add some more functionalities here if you see the an incident overview page i can see only title and and also the identified details here i will add some more thing for that i will close all these things go back to your application information page choose an object page within the object page so incident overview here itself i want to add right so within the subsection incident details within the form if you want to add fields we can add it now i will add some description add yeah let's go back to your application and run yes you can see the description here same way if you want to add the sections here you can add it or else if you want to customize add a custom section to your object page i mean if you need to extend your application beyond the refined possible with annotation the flexible programming model will allows you to add a custom section containing to your own specific so to simplify this you will find a prepared content in the ext folder let's close this here test resource folder will be there within the test resource we have ext folder if i extend this ext folder we have a fragments see these things if you want to use it you can use it if what you have to do is you can use drag and drop move for the existing folder like this within the web app we have to do further we have to extend this yeah yes so it is asking are you sure you want to move yes move yes now within the web page you can see this now i will going to add this page to my custom section for that sections add a oh, sorry not this sections add a custom section here we have to give the type and also the file path of this structure this all things we are going to do let's copy this here we have a file name path 
this one we have to give it here so like this we can do the things so guys in next video i will show you how to create an opa test cases within this application or else i will choose some new application i will do the test case thanks everyone don't forget to like share and subscribe